Welcome to Gaming Backlog! I'm Bina, and today we'll be talking about Helldivers. Helldivers 2, the sequel to the cult classic twin stick shooter, comes packed with the chaotic bullet flying action that fans adore. It quickly garnered praise for its intense, adrenaline fueled combat and its ability to turn even the best laid plans into utter chaos. People were so sure this was their Game of the Year title, but as the game grew, issues began to unravel, making it hard to play, like game breaking bugs, availability issues, unstable performance, but most important of all, balancing. These issues were so bad that in less than 6 months, Helldivers 2 dropped 90% of its player base. But as of writing this video, Arrowhead Game Studios wanted to make things right by releasing a patch that could save the game's future. But was it a good update? And will this bring back Helldivers 2's former glory? To give a quick idea of what Helldivers is, Helldivers 2 is a co-op PvE game much like its predecessor. It wants you and other Helldivers to spread managed democracy across the different planets through any means possible. Each mission, you and three other Helldivers will complete various objectives tasked by Super Earth, like destroying enemy bases, asserting places of interest, and maybe even launching a giant nuke. All of this contributes to taking over the planet and spreading Super Earth managed democracy. It was a definite breath of fresh air for the gaming industry and showed people the potential to what a good live service model could look like as it offered exciting new gameplay as well as consumer-friendly monetization practices. Because of these reasons, Helldivers 2 became very easy to love and players became hella passionate for it. Sure, the game was buggy and unpolished, but there is a certain charm to it that made it so good to play. But if we're being completely honest, being charming could only take you so far. Because a few months after its release, the numerous problems that plague Helldivers 2 would become increasingly more apparent. Random disconnects, flying ragdolls, and undeserved one-shots are just a thing a normal Helldiver would experience daily. And it would only be a matter of time before players would get fed up with it, which I can totally understand as someone who's played. To be fair to Arrowhead Studios, they didn't really expect Helldivers 2 to get that much success in a short matter of time as the first game was fairly niche. So you could say that the devs are very much suffering from success. However, one thing that is incredibly inexcusable was honestly the dev team's weird way of balancing the game. To simply put it, Arrowhead was a little too trigger happy with firing off the nerf gun. When I first joined Helldivers, it was around the time where the railgun got its massive nerf by reducing its safe damage to armored targets. The reason for this? It was just too consistent with dealing against chargers and bile titans. It wasn't overpowered or anything, as it wasn't really effective with clearing the horde of trash mobs out to get you. But that just shows you how Arrowhead makes their changes, and how it can drastically turn the tables on someone's gameplay. Instead of buffing other weapons to increase their viability, they would rather nerf decent weapons in order to make them all the same. I do agree that there needs to be some sort of balance even for a PvE game, but some weapons just feel like they've been through too many nerfs, that I even kinda wonder why they are even in the options menu. The community would reach its breaking point around the time of the Escalation of Freedom update, where Arrowhead would would announce a new warbond consisting of new fire-based weapons for you to use. This is all well and good, but two days before the warbond's release, they announced that they're making fire damage more realistically. And by that, I mean it can't go through armor now. Needless to say, this was extremely frustrating as people were excited for trying out a new warbond. It didn't take very long for the community to descend into chaos, with frustrated players venting their complaints while others complained about all the complaints. Things got so bad that an entire movement sprang up advocating for letting the bots take over Super Earth. It escalated to the point where some players would team up and queue just to grief others, intentionally sabotaging missions for the fun of it. It's crazy. All of this came to a close when the game director of Helldivers, Mikhail E, shared some news on August 16, 2024 that they're taking the initiative to rework the balancing by making the game more fun and less frustrating. This was a monumental task, and everyone was a bit doubtful that they could pull it off. Fast forward a month later on September 17, 2024, the newest patch for Helldivers just released. And let me tell you, it was glorious. Everything just works now. The patch basically reverts some previous nerfs, 
Boosting every weapon's damage output and enemies, especially the armored ones, take significantly more damage now. Not only that, but your weak spots are even more exploitable now. The catch to this, however, is that you also take more damage, making everything kind of a glass cannon, which in turn makes a race of who can kill who faster. You might be thinking that this made the game easy, and to that we say, well, yeah. The balance patch wasn't perfect, making even the highest difficulty Super Helldive look like a walk in the park. Honestly, what made Helldivers 2's higher difficulty modes challenging wasn't so much the actual difficulty but rather how frustrating and limited your available tools were. And I would gladly take this over any of the previous patches. Also, Johan Pilsted, the game's previous CEO and current chief creative director, announced on X that they are interested in making even higher difficulty levels. So stay tuned for that. Nevertheless, it was an amazing patch. Instead of relying on the same anti-tank stratagems like the Quasar Cannon, EAT, and Auto Cannon, we now have a much broader range of options to choose from, like the anti-material rifle, heavy machine gun, and even the return of the mighty railgun. But that's just it. This was just a patch to fix what was already broken. And at the end of the day, it's still a patch update. And there's only so much a patch update has in terms of content. There are so many things that need to be worked on, like the PSN issues, God, and the general gameplay loop. As much as it's very fun right now, the game still needs more stuff to keep the remaining playbase it has. Things can get very repetitive and not in a good way. Helldivers 2 has yet to introduce the third enemy faction, and while there are grindy ship upgrades, they feel a little bit unrewarding at times. I really hope they bring back those individual weapon upgrades from the first game as it could be a good way to implement a more consistent progression rather than grinding for war bonds all day. Still, this was a step in the right direction. Credit to where credit is due, Arrowhead Studios did not give up on Helldivers 2. They wanted to make things right, and they did. It wasn't perfect, but it was a pretty damn good fix by any measure. I don't think Helldivers 2 can amass the same number of players again, but the player count they have right now is more than enough to sustain them. And if Arrowhead keeps making the right decisions, people will definitely stick around. It looks like Arrowhead is keeping their promise of making a good live service game. We'll definitely keep playing Helldivers 2 as the stratagem combinations are definitely more extensive now. But what about you? Have you tried a new patch? What kind of update would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to see more episodes of Gaming Backlog, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. This has been Bina, missing shell every day. And we'll see you in the next one.